My name is Corey Taylor and uh, I am extraordinary. Halloween is just the, the holiday for me. Man. It's the night that is fun no matter what age you're at. Plus my son gets tons of candy, I can raid his bag. Oh, 100 grand bars. Oh. Dude, I would punch babies to get those things. Seriously, I loved 100 grand bars. I was just, oh, you know? That and uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I, I think if there is a God, the one thing that he did right was peanut butter and chocolate together. I very rarely get to dress up for Halloween anymore, but two years ago, I went as uh, Sid Vicious. You know, there was a big, you know, costume deal, and I literally put that that together in one night because I just had, you know, I was like, what am I gonna do? So I basically just smeared myself in white paint, spiked my hair all up black, and some black pants, and I was like, there you go, I'm Sid Vicious. And I just kind of smeared blood and everything all over the place. The great thing was I'd get bombed, and I was still in character. Well, you know, I mean, we recorded Volume Three at the mansion, and. Uh, there's, there's definitely something touched about that place, big time. I'll give you a quick little story. Me and Clown were sharing a room at the, at the mansion. Um, he had flown back to Iowa. So I'm there by myself, you know, I got the door wide open, I'm taking a shower, I'm singing, you know. I'm gonna blah, 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 blah. I turned my head and no joke, I saw a person in a full tuxedo walk by the door slowly and staring at me. So I freak out, I jump out, you know, buck naked, shampoo still in my hair, and I run into the room and it literally took me half a second, gone. I, I told that story in Kerrang! and the Kerrang! Uh, writer did research and uh, apparently police found a gentleman hanging in that room dressed in a full tuxedo. He killed himself because his fiance broke up with him the day before the wedding. Two alarm clocks that were set to different times, automatic, like, auto, all of a sudden went off at three in the morning. Right? When I got up to shut them off, they shut off by themselves. I saw a jack bottle fly across the room by itself. Luckily it was empty, I right? beat that ghost's ass, let me tell you. You know, to this day, there's only like three horror movies that really scared me. Jaws, obviously. My mom took me to see Jaws when I was four. So now I have the Jaws fear, you know? the worst Jaws fear. But me being the masochistic idiot that I am, I'll go see every shark movie. I'll watch Shark Week and me and my fiance are already planning a shark cage dive when we go back to Australia because I'm an idiot. I have a remarkable memory of seeing uh, Night of the Living Dead when I was about 12 years old. When I, when I saw that, we were living in a, uh, a fucked up farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. That they used to show horror movies at like midnight, like old horror movies, and most of them were bunk. You know, like, like Bela Lugosi and, you know, Dr. Alucard or whatever, you know, crap. Parents are gone, they're out boozing. Night of the Living Dead comes on, black and white version. Creepy as all get out. I am seriously <laughs> scared the ever living out of me could not handle it, like seriously. Bravo, Romero, love it. The things that scare me are real life situations. Real life is much more scary than anything we could put on the, on the movies for. Which is why I get very upset when people try to blame movies for the violence in this world. I'm like, are you kidding me? There's more violence in a, in a four hour period on CNN than any movie I have in my massive collection. But, you know, then again, I mean, showgirls scared the crap out of me. Elizabeth Berkeley. Ugh.